Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Photovoltaic Gate Driver. There is a relevant video to this presentation, Getting the Input Capacitance and Input Charge of MOSFET Gates. Here is the link, and I'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. There are cases in which we need a static gate driver for a MOSFET. For example, if we have a load, and if you like to drive it through a MOSFET and the load has to be referred to ground, then we need a floating gate driver, which is isolated. We need to drive it obviously from the ground side, but then this side has to be floating. And then we can drive the gate continuously without switching. So in this case, we cannot use a solution like a bootstrap for a high side uh, supply. So the, the alternatives are to use an isolated power supply and isolated gate driver, or a charge pump type driver, or a charge pump power supply with a driver. And then there is another solution, which is a photovoltaic driver, which I'm going to talk about in this presentation. This driver is basically an arrangement of a light emitting diode and an array of photodiodes. I'm showing here one photodiode. So if we have a LED which we are driving and then the light penetrating the base area, the junction area, will generate a carrier, charge carriers like holes and electrons, which will cause a current to flow in the circuit. This is now the load. So this is like a solar cell, you might say, except it's not solar, it's not the sun. It is the LED which is shining on this uh, photodiode, or you might say mini solar cell, to generate a voltage. And here will be the gate. So we can generate a voltage to drive the gate of a MOSFET. Now the equivalent circuit of this arrangement is a current source, which is the current which is generated with this light is hitting the junction, a diode in forward conduction, and this is now the load. So we can understand that the maximum voltage that we can generate per cell, like solar cell again, is like 0.6 volt approximately. The short current is this current generated here by these uh, charge carriers, which are generated by the light. And this will be the current that will be in the short circuit. And then as we increase the resistance of the load, the voltage will go up. Eventually, the voltage will be clamped by the forward conduction of the diode. Now, the optocoupler is something very similar, except it's more sophisticated. We have here a phototransistor, which then we have the photodiode between the base and the emitter. So the light from the LED is actually generating current through the base which is then turning on the transistor, and then we use it as a on-off switch, which is isolated. Now, just to see the operation here, I've connected a load to the base emitter terminal. This is the junction of the photodiode. So we can, this is an LT spice model, so we can run now a simulation with stepping the load, and here is what we are getting. We, we see that the voltage, as we sweep the load, the voltage is clamped to about 660 millivolt. With very small resistance, of course, we don't develop any voltage. And then we have this, like the short circuit current. And we can calculate it, say, from this point. This is 60 millivolt, 10K. So in this case, we see that the current in 6 microamp and this is the base current okay so the collector current will be of course times beta so this is how this optocoupler works but we are talking now about a driver which has an array of these photodiodes it has a led which is coupled to the photodiode and then here is the output which can then drive a gate of a MOS. okay so this is the idea here and of course, the current that we can get is fairly small. It is a tiny diode, and of course, the LED is also limited. So we can get fairly low current. We're talking about microamps. But this could be, of course, very useful when you need a simple static driver 
It will not be fast, we'll see it in a minute, but it is isolated, very simple, one package, and then you just drive the LED, and that's it. Now you can use it then as a driver for a single MOSFET, which is floating, of course, this part is floating here and isolated. And of course, you can use it to drive a back-to-back -back transistor, so to get a bi-directional switch. I would not recommend to operate it without a resistor. We usually like to have a resistor here because the impedance here is fairly high. And then uh, we have leakages here and then some noise generated. Obviously, the resistor cannot be very small because then we'll sort of short circuit the whole current that is generated here. But I think that some resistance is required. So here from the data sheet, we see the performance of this particular unit. We see this is the drive to the LED. 45 milliamp it's quite high, but for 45 we get up to 70 microamp, and this is short circuit. And for 5 milliamp we got something like less than 10 microamp. And you see that as the voltage and the output is becoming larger and larger, then eventually you are clamped because of the forward conduction of the dial. And the clamping is to about, say, in the maximum, something like nine volts, okay? Now, knowing that the voltage drop per diode is about 0.6, I can estimate that we are talking about something like 15 diodes in this array. Maybe it's 12 to 15 diodes in this array, okay? So we have a higher voltage because we are sort of stacking them to get a higher voltage, more than the 0.6 per diode. But again, the current is fairly limited to these values. And here is some basic information from the data sheet. We have, uh, this is the forward current of the LED. And you see that the voltages we are talking about, we just seen it is, is around eight, nine volt we can get, it's an open circuit. And the short circuit, again, we've seen it earlier, depends on the current of the LED, the, the intensity of the light, of course, and this will be between, say, 7 microamps up to approximately 50 microamps. Now, this current is, of course, very important because we are charging the input capacitance of the MOSFET. Again, I've given a reference to a video which is talking about the input capacitance, and the smaller the current, the longer it will be until we reach the threshold voltage of the MOSFET and a higher voltage than that. Now, they are giving here some information about the load, which is 200 picofarad, with the forward current for the LED of 20 milliamp, and then the T on is 53 microsecond, and T off is 65 microsecond. Now, T off is very important, and there is a need for an a special circuit for the turn off. The reason is that if we have just the dial and we have no current through the LED, now this terminal is sort of open. There is a capacitance of the capacitor and it'll take a very long time for the voltage to, to drop because there is no path for the current. So during the turn off circuitry, there are many ways you can do it. And it is responsible for actually discharging the capacitor through a back current here. So this is an external circuit which is activated at a turn off time. Now the time which is given here, turn on and turn off, 53 microsecond, is given for a load of 200 picofarad. That is if you have here 200 picofarad. This is fairly small capacitance. As discussed in the video that I referenced, you can very easily get the input capacitance of a MOSFET. It'll be at least one nanofarad for a sizable MOSFET, not a tiny one, and maybe up to 10 nanofarad even, or even 50, depending on the size of the MOSFET. Now for a one nanofarad, the time then would be like 0.5 millisecond and 0.6 millisecond. Well, this is a long time when you compare it to switching frequencies, but this is not a fair comparison. We're talking here about a driver 
that is supposed to turn on and off a load. And in most cases, this switching time will be okay. And here are some more information from the datasheet. We see again here the forward current of the LED. This is the open circuit. And this is how a load is affecting it. Well, as you can see, if the resistance of the load is becoming smaller, then obviously you are losing voltage. But say one mega ohm is not so, so bad. And this would be like the range of a resistance that I would put uh, just to protect the gate of the MOSFET. And here is something very important, and that is the sensitivity of this open circuit voltage as a function of the temperature. Now we know that the forward voltage of a diode has a negative temperature coefficient. It's about minus 2.5 millivolt per centigrade. This is like a universal constant, you might say. Now here we have more than one diode, let's say 15 diodes. So let's have a look at, say, the case of 5 milliamp for the lead. And if I take these two points, I have here 0 degree centigrade, 100. So it's a span of 100 degrees centigrade. And the difference here is 4 volt. So we see that for this particular case, the slope is minus 40 millivolt per degree centigrade. Now, since we have, I have estimated to be 15 a diode, then it comes to be minus 2.6 millivolt per degree centigrade, which makes sense. However, this is quite a bit of a drop. So in this case, and if you're going to use this particular driver, there are many other companies who are making drivers. I'll show you another one in a minute. Then you better use the so-called logic level MOSFET, okay? And for example, I am I brought here, just an example, of course, from Vichet also, a MOSFET, which is a 100 volt, and the RDS on is about uh, 10 million. And this MOSFET has a threshold of about 3 volt. So this would be okay. This will be okay for this driver. Now, again, if we assume that the voltage can drop up to 5 volt, then the resistance RDS on at 5 volt is not, uh, of course, very low or the lowest one that you can get with 10 volt of gate to source voltage. So it will be like 8 milli ohm rather than 7 or 9 milli ohm, which is okay. So with this transistor and this photovoltaic gate driver, you are okay. Now, using this plot here, I can actually get also the input capacitance of this particular diode for the 5 volt. So I have here a charge, total gate charge of about 22, I think, yeah, it's about 22 nanocoulomb, and this is 5 volt. So 22 over 5 is 4.4 nanofarad. Now remember that the data that they gave in the table was for 200 picofarad. So in this, for this transistor, the turn on and off time will be something like in the range of two to three milliseconds, which again, for many, many applications, it is more than three. There are other companies who are making similar devices, and I brought here another case. This is an IXIS device. This particular device has two units in one package. Not only that, it seems that they have more photodiodes in the array. You see that the open circuit is up to 12 volt. However, the current is lower. So it, it has a higher voltage, but lower current. And in some cases, it could be okay. In this particular case, there are also two units in one package. And if you wish, you can actually connect them in series. So you'll get up to 24 volt open circuit. I guess this will be for 25 degrees. Remember that with temperature, the uh, voltage is actually dropping. So here is some data from for this particular device. We see that the open voltage can go up to 15 volt at maximum. So it, it's like typical will be 12 volt. But again, the current is lower than we have seen in the Vichet device. 
So it's a smaller diode, but then there are two units in one package. So depending on application, this might be a better choice in one particular. Again, they give the on and off times for 200 picofarad, which is very small. And this is now two millisecond and 0.5 millisecond because the current is of course lower. And again, uh, for the practical case in which the capacitance will be higher, then of course you would expect something in the range of five to 10 millisecond. And again, depending on the application, it might be okay. In this particular case, you can actually connect these in parallel. So it get a higher current. The voltage will be like a single unit, but the current will be twice as large. So the timing will be half. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.